the human body is often visualized as a symmetrical form. For example, the geometric precision of this computer animation of the human body. In reality, we are actually quite lopsided. Most people have a dominant ear. The same is true for eyes, feet, and hands. Left and right-handedness is perhaps the most obvious of these asymmetries. From the time most children first start picking up and using objects, they tend to favor one hand over the other. And, in a majority of humans, the right side is dominant. Around 85% of the modern human population on Earth is right-handed. This trend is borne out by another line of evidence. Skeletal asymmetry. As you, or anyone, even a Neanderthal, use muscles in your body, and as those muscles grow stronger, the parts of the skeleton to which those muscles attach also grows in order to provide more robust anchor points for the increased muscle mass. After death, the skeleton can reveal which parts of the body were stronger, and thus used more intensively, than others. Furthermore, new research suggests right-handedness in humans goes back at least 1.8 million years. The controversial Homo habilis, who lived in what is now Tanzania some 1.8 million years ago appears to also have favored his or her right hand, according to new research published in the Journal of Human Evolution. Until this study, the earliest evidence of right-handedness appeared in Neanderthals, and their earlier relatives from about 430,000 years ago, but how can researchers figure out from just bones if an individual was right or left-hand dominant, or if they were handed at all? The early human had to hold tough meat in place to cut it up into smaller pieces that were easier to chew, so held one end of the meat in their left hand and the other with their front teeth. Then, with his or her right hand, the individual sliced at the meat using a sharp stone tool. But when the right hand slipped, the tool would have scraped across the person's front teeth, leaving predominantly diagonal grooves much like those spotted by researchers. If researchers were to find evidence of handedness in more Homo habilis fossils, that could perhaps tell them something about the evolution of this trait. Neanderthals appear to have a ratio of lefties to righties similar to that in Homo sapiens populations, but scientists aren't sure how that came to be. Some researchers have suggested that handedness arose out of a restructuring of the brain that happened in early humans and their relatives. If that is so, then finding evidence of handedness in Homo habilis could help researchers confirm that correlation. Neanderthals seem to have had unusually strong right arms based on studies of a number of upper arm bones, humeri, from Neanderthal specimens. We humans typically have a 4-13% difference in muscle development between our right and left arms. Neanderthals, on the other hand, had up to 50% or more muscular asymmetry. Biological anthropologists have suggested for decades that this development in Neanderthal right arm muscles was a result of the right-handed use of spears to hunt large game animals. The strength needed for the thrusting or throwing motion capable of killing a bison, horse, or reindeer would certainly be immense. Another hypothesis, though, suggests that the muscular asymmetry is the result of a much less dangerous task the arduous scraping of the animal skins that Neanderthals used to keep warm during harsh European winters. Early research found that Neanderthal stone scrapers were mostly used by right-handed individuals. Whatever the reason, the Neanderthal skeletal record shows that a stark majority, 76% of 69 Neanderthals studied, were dominant in their right hands. That's very close to the modern human figure of 85%. How might a prevailing trend of right-handedness have affected Neanderthal day-to-day -day life? Handedness probably had much the same impacts for them as it has for us today. Instead of right and left-handed pairs of scissors, Neanderthals had right and left-handed stone tools. Perhaps Neanderthals also ate with a preferred hand or made gestures with their dominant arm. There are only a few known examples of Neanderthal art, but compellingly, one handprint does exist on the wall of the Maltravieso cave in Spain. The print was made by dabbing or blowing paint onto the wall around what is demonstrably a left hand. The artist, whoever he or she was, painted right-handed. In fact, about 85-90% to of humans worldwide are right-handed, at least for most tasks they perform. Most of the rest are left-handed. True ambidexterity is very rare. 
yet researchers are not sure just when in hominin evolution a tendency to use one hand over the other evolved. Evidence for handedness in other animals is inconsistent and controversial, nor why handedness might have been favored by natural selection. Many researchers have suggested that there is a link between handedness and the evolution of language, because both involve asymmetries, or lateralization, in the brain. Most people, including most who are left handed, do their speech processing on the left side of their brains. Citing earlier work by, researchers have pointed out that handedness does not mean that one hand is dominant over the other. Rather, both hands have different but equally important roles. In right handed people, for example, the right hand might be used for tasks requiring greater manual dexterity whereas the left hand might perform the more mundane, but nevertheless crucial role of supporting an object. In human children, this kind of handedness begins to emerge between 7 and 13 months of age, and is well established by age 3. Is this a trait that our hominin ancestors also possessed? How long has right-handedness outweighed left-handedness? Ancient stone hand axes were often designed to be used by the right or left hand. Figuring out when such consistency arose in hominins is not an easy task. In a small number of cases, it is possible to detect signs of handedness in early hominin fossils, such as the shoulder and arm bones of Nariokotome boy, a nearly complete 1.6 million year old Homo ergaster skeleton found in Kenya by a research team. Nariokotome boy was clearly right handed as indicated by the deeper bone insertions of his deltoid muscles in his clavicle, collar bone, and the greater length of his ulna. Yet knowing the hand bias of one individual tells us nothing about the handedness of the population he belonged to, let alone that of his entire species. Although hand bias may be hard to detect among early hominins, there is clear evidence from the large number of available Neanderthal skeletons that our evolutionary cousins tended to be right-handed. Their right arms and shoulders show greater robusticity, possibly from throwing spears as they hunted wild animals. And studies of the teeth of both Neanderthals and Homo heidelbergensis, the presumed common ancestor of Neanderthals and modern humans, show that the direction of their striations is consistent with biting on food held in the right hand. If the trend toward right-handedness was indeed well established by the era of Homo heidelbergensis, which thrived in Europe and Africa about 500,000 years ago, what was its evolutionary advantage? The increasing sophistication of hominin toolmaking technologies over time may have selected for a greater degree of handedness. Indeed, the technology-dense lifestyles of early hominins might have required our ancestors to more or less make up their minds about what hands they were going to use to perform complex tasks. Moreover, such hand bias could have aided the learning process as hominins taught each other toolmaking and other skills. A number of studies have shown that people learn manually difficult tasks, such as not tying, more easily when they use the same left and right hand movements as their teachers. If the hypothesis that handedness was selected for because it made hominins better toolmakers is correct, it should be testable in the archaeological record. The more complex the tool, the more evidence there should be for handedness in its use. Yet a number of questions remain, including whether there are selective advantages for right over left handedness that are strong enough to explain why almost the entire human species skews to the right, and if such advantages exist, why 15% of humans remain stubbornly left handed. The answer may come with research into the genetics of brain asymmetries. The trait of right handedness is commonly believed to be a sign of the development of another uniquely human trait language. We are right handed because the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body, and the left side of brain is where language is processed. This is important because it tells us that they were brain lateralized just like we are, and they probably had a language capacity. No animals other than humans show such a bias toward right-handedness. In some primates, such as chimps and gorillas, a small 5% shift toward the right can be seen in some studies. This is an example of brain asymmetry, where one side of the brain takes on functions that the other side doesn't. In addition to our special right-hand dominance, no other animals show the language abilities of humans. No one knows when Homo sapiens developed language, 
but many researchers believe that brain lateralization was an important part of its origin. This finding has important implications for the never-ending debates about the cognitive abilities of Neanderthals, and the findings convincingly demonstrate that language probably existed by at least half a million years ago. It doesn't matter where you find them, humans have that ratio. Across history and geography, our species has shown remarkable consistency. And no other species appeared so strongly biased toward right-handedness. The trait's emergence in our species alone was yet another indication of our superiority, a preference controlled by the brain and directly linked to our capacity for language and tool-making. However, as researchers have refined methods and unearthed new evidence, it seems much of what we thought we knew about handedness was anything but right. Fossils reveal that right-handedness goes much further back in our evolutionary story than once believed. Recent research has shown that handedness and language are not as closely related as we once thought. Remarkably, neuroscientists even suggested that the origin of handedness is not even in the brain. The fossil record of hominins, humans, our ancestors and closest evolutionary kin going back to the split from other primates about 7 million years ago, is mostly fragmentary, making it impossible to determine handedness by studying limb bones. Motor biases are seen throughout the animal world, all the way back to 500 million years ago and the emergence of vertebrates, and possibly even older than that. Favoring one side of a symmetrical body over the other for a particular task is linked to cerebral lateralization. Essentially, the left and right hemispheres of the brain divide processes for greater efficiency. Most researchers believe that lateralization explains how handedness arises, including our consistent 90% right-handedness ratio. Thus, lateralization is not unique to us, but there are characteristics of lateralization in humans that are unique. Lateralization is ancient, but we take it to the extreme. It's not like the right hand does everything and the left hand does nothing. It's not so much that we're right-handed, as that we have a characteristic division of labor between the hands. I wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members, who come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. Do you have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography and illustration, to graphic design, freelancing, and more, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. I recently completed a course titled Creative Video Storytelling and Editing by graphic designer and video editor Nikki Stevens to help level up my own video editing skills and how to effectively use stock video footage to improve my storytelling. If you are interested in making a career pivot or up-leveling your skills, Skillshare is a great resource for freelancers and entrepreneurs to help you learn new skills to support your side hustle or launch into a totally new career. Give Skillshare a try, and the first 1,000 people to use my exclusive link in the video description will get a one-month free trial.